And, of course, we're going to transition. The Junkie team is deep. We got a lot of talent. I want to welcome our international superstar reporter, Fada Hanoon. Fada, welcome to Spinning Back. It's been a few weeks since we had you on. Always great to see you. Uh, I know the chat room is going to blow up. Um, all right, so let's talk about the big free agent signing that the UFC had that I wouldn't say got swept under the rug, but she's a star. She's a two-time Olympic gold medalist. She's a world champion at PFL, has an excellent record. I mean, even the person that hung an L on her, she's beaten her twice. So she comes over, and she's got Holly Holm, and that's a uh, you know high-profile fight against a former champion. Yet somehow, I guess eh, it didn't make it didn't make the main card. I think we've all given our takes. I'm not sure if I've heard yours on that one. Are, are you okay with Bo Nickel and not Kayla Harrison on the main card? Uh, I mean, I, I think it should be Kayla Harrison versus Holly Holm just because of the significance of the fight. They've also got the name value and also there could be big title implications. Uh, don't say that to Juliana Penny, of course, but there could be big title implications with a Kayla Harrison win. So, yeah, that's probably the fight that I would have expected on the main card. I understand why Bo Nichols on there. They see a, a, a potential future champion and whatnot. So it's just building him and kind of the UFC investing in Bo Nickel is just the dance partner. And that's no disrespect to Cody Brendage. I think he knows what's at stake and how much he could capitalize from a spot like that. But just because the dance partner, like he, it's not a, a, a fight where you've got two guys that are in the rankings or anything like that. So I think that would be the only thing, but I'm, I don't absolutely hate her or anything. Card is absolutely stacked. And I think anybody could have been that main card opener. It could have been Yuri. And uh, Rakic, it could have been Al Jermaine and Calvin Cater. could have been anyone. So I don't necessarily absolutely hate it. How big of a free agent signing was this for the UFC? You know, comparing it to the other ones we've had in the past. Oh, it's huge. And it's perfect timing. I think that's what the great thing about this is when you look at the Bantamweight division, we just, you know, Amanda Nunes retiring. We just had that vacant uh, Bantamweight title fight between Raquel Pennington and Mairo Buena Silva. I know there was some criticism uh, surrounding that fight, although Raquel was on a nice winning streak and, and whatnot. But this is perfect timing in terms of name value and Kayla being able to make a big impact. Of course, we heard her interview with uh, Mike Bond and, and she was talking about how, you know, UFC basically told her it had to be Bantamweight because obviously there's no longer a featherweight division. I don't think they want to go back there. So she knows she's got a tough cut ahead of her. Everyone's doubting her cut, uh, the likes of the champion Raquel and Juliana. And it, all, you've seen you know, all these uh, interviews that the women's bantamweights have done talking about them not thinking that she's going to be able to perform well. Chris Cyborg also had her comments about how she could lose her speed. So uh, there's a lot of pressure on Kayla Harrison to not only perform well, but to show up and look good uh, against Holly Holm. But, you know, a win here and, you know, sky's the limit for her in terms of how far she can go in the UFC absolutely has the potential of being uh, one of the bigger names and it's a much needed signing for women's bantamweight i think the timing's perfect is that the right dance partner did they choose the right one danny for kayla harrison yeah i mean holly Holm right now is probably the most recognizable name right now in as far as like uh, ufc women uh women's bantamweight division so i do think this is the the right matchup i think beating her i mean just sends a, a big message in the division Sure, Holly Holm might not be the same Holly Holm of a few years ago, but she's still, I think, top 10 quality at the very least, probably closer to like top six, top five. So I think this is the the right uh, partner. Um, what I am curious about is, is, is the weight. Um, I don't know if this is Kayla Harrison's optimal weight. Like, we'll, we'll see. This is the first time ever that she'll make 135 pounds for an MMA fight. So um, I, I love it. I think it's time for her to make the jump to the UFC. I love the fact that she's fighting a, a big name like Holly Holm. But I just don't know if 135 is the weight class. So I think they got everything right about uh, this matchup. Just the weight class, I guess, we'll see. But I'm curious to, to know what Ghost thinks about this one. Because um, we've seen when they try to force Cyborg down to 135 and she was doing the 140. That didn't turn out so well. I, but again, Kayla, Kayla is the type of girl that, you know, if she wants to make something, she'll make something happen. So maybe it is. Hey. And goes how excited were we for Patricio Frady when he dropped to 35? He didn't look that great. You know, he looked great at 45, went up to 55, and the power still held up. But when he went downward, we were all we were all canceling Sergio Pettis before the fight even started. And it sure as hell didn't go down like that. What Danny's saying, what do you think, man? Is could this be the weight class where you know maybe she's just not the Kayla Harrison we've we've seen? 
Yeah, man. I think this is kind of a nightmare scenario for Kayla Harrison because, like Danny said, that's a big deal. You know, it's like buying a new car. All of the gadgets are all the same, right? You still have a gas pedal, you still have a brake, you still have steering, but it doesn't handle the same. It takes you a while to figure that out. She has to figure that out in a new organization, okay, on the biggest card of all time. There is a lot of pressure on Kayla Harrison right now. If you look at it, yes, this is a big signing, right? On paper, it's huge, but it's a little different than what we're used to. When, when they signed Eddie Alvarez, when they signed Michael Chandler, we knew that these guys, based on some of the fighters they fought, these were not just good fighters. They were great fighters, okay? With Kayla Harrison, we're still kind of figuring out. We know that she's good, but is she great? We need to figure that out by putting her up against UFC opposition. This is a ton of pressure on her. It's two fights, guys. It's a fight against the scale, and it's a fight against Holly Holm. And Holly Holm has been in this situation before, right? Like, this is a big cage. This is somebody who also flourished in two different sports, okay? That's a different mentality. Um, it's a huge cage. She's got excellent footwork. She can take her time. There is a lot against Kayla Harrison in this fight. But if Kayla can pull it off, man, she can put herself in a really nice spot. And we know how charismatic she is. The second she gets that mic, I think she can cut an excellent p promo. And maybe she does put a little pressure on Juliana Pena. I, I will say this though, and I because I because I was I'm just kind of reflecting on, on what I said. I know that the weight class is a little bit questionable, but there is a plus to it. I do think that at this point in time, the UFC is more in need of Kayla Harrison than Kayla Harrison in need of the UFC. Kayla Harrison has done so much for the sport, has legacy in judo, PFL champion, has made a ton of money. Right now, the UFC women's bantamweight division is in a very, very poor state. Probably the worst it's been since it's uh, since the start of the weight class. So I do feel like injecting Kayla Harrison into the mix is a must for the division of Flurry uh, and um, to flourish. Sorry, and I do think that in that case, Kayla Harrison does have a lot of leverage because the UFC needs a name like her in that division. So. The weight cut and the technicality might be a little bit questionable, but in terms of just looking at it as a business thing, I, I do think uh, there are pluses for, for her to be fighting at 135. So I didn't want to seem too grim. So so there's the, the positive side of it. Bada, um, Kayla's gold on the mic. You know, Juliana's a good talker as well. So they have a few options when it comes to building a fight. The champ, Raquel, she's a little bit more chill. She just lets the fist do the talking. She's been around the sport for a long time. Respect to her. But, you know, I think back to when Askren came over, I think Robbie Lawler was a, a hitman. You know, he was supposed to do the job and, and send Askren packing. It was kind of personal between Dana and uh, Askren. What do you think is happening here, this matchup? Why was it built with Holly? Is it basically maybe just Holly's got a name and it'll put Kayla over? Holly maybe has what it takes to beat Kayla? How, how are you kind of viewing how, how this kind of – this matchup was built. Do you think that if Kayla gets through all this, she's just going to be the one who, and she's already been chirping, by the way, back and forth with the champ that she gets next. She could very well. And I think the matching up, her up with Holly Holmes, is exactly that a notable name, a former champion. Uh, so a win for Kayla. I mean, it speaks to what Danny was saying before that the division kind of needs a name like Kayla. And that's why I called it a perfect signing at a perfect timing. So I think by them matching her up with Holly Holm, especially on a card like USC 300, it's perfect in my opinion. And Holly has a ton of experience. She's, she's got a win over, uh, two wins over Raquel Pennington, who's the current champion. She's fought the who's who uh, in women's MMA in general, from Cyborg to Ronda, you name it, Amanda Nunes. So she's got a ton of experience. Having a name like Holly Holm on your resume is a big deal. So if Kayla Harrison can get past Holly, I know a lot of people are going to say that Holly's up there in age. She's not in her prime. She's not the Holly Holm who knocked out Ronda Rousey. Fair enough. All of these are very valid points. But you have to remember, this is Kayla Harrison's UFC debut. This is going to be considered a step up in competition compared to the athletes she's been fighting at PFL. So I think it's a good fight. I think it's got all those attributes that she needs. And yes, if Kayla Harrison can go out there and look dominant and look impressive, because it's not necessarily that easy to dominate Holly Holm. Holly Holm is tricky. Her footwork is tricky. At the end of the day, if both these girls are able to implement their game plans, it might not turn out to be the most entertaining fight <laughs> because if Holly's able to stay on the outside, uh, stick and move, because that's what she's going to want to do, right? She's not going to want to clinch and get close to Kayla Harrison. She's going to want to circle. She's going to want to touch her from the outside, blitz in and out. So in that way, 
I think if Holly Holm is successful in her game plan, it might not be the most entertaining uh, fight. And if Kayla just takes her down and isn't uh, vicious and gets a vicious finish, I think that could harm her chances too. So I think it all depends on how the fight plays out. But I think if Kayla Harrison can go out there and put a dominant performance against Holly Holm, which isn't necessarily an easy thing to do. Holly Holm doesn't often get dominated. I think that could propel her forward. And again, I know Juliana's going to have something to say about that, but uh, I think it's all going to depend on on how she looks uh, against Holly Holm. Goes in the chat, the comparisons are being made to Ronda. Again, that fight was, I think we're pushing eight or nine years, right? But mm -hmm. Kayla's got the judo background like Ronda. They're saying that Ronda, you know, just didn't have the formidable striking to really put any fear into home did kayla develop that to go along with the judo and mixing that with now home is just older is there a path to victory through you know striking to set up the judo or does she go straight to the ground i mean there is but she's got to cover a lot of distance you know if holly's smart she'll she'll use that jab she'll pump that jab and keep her away and circle out and it's going to be difficult the more and more that fight goes on and the more and more things aren't going kayla harrison's way there's more room, there's more margin for error. Um, but can Kayla do it? Can she close the distance and get a hold of her? Yeah. But I'm going to say this, like if she doesn't get that takedown right away and, and Holly can fight her off, that might be that first mini battle, that first demoralizing uh, thing that happens to her in that fight. And it could lead to a downfall, but she can do it. It's just, it's tough, man. It's a tall order here. Everyday preacher in the chat room says, home head kicks Harrison. I can't wait till the staff picks come out on Friday at MMA Junkie. Let's go around the horn real quick, guys. 10, 15 seconds. Who wins this matchup? Danny, Harrison, and home. Come on, tell us right now. I, I just feel like anything that Kayla Harrison sets her mind to, uh, she's going to be successful. She's just that kind of person. So I'm going to go with Kayla Harrison. I do have questions about the weight cut, but um, – I'm going to go with Kayla Harrison. Yeah, that's my favorite. How about you, Goes? Do you have questions about the weight cut and who wins? Uh, too many questions going in, so I'm going to stick with Holly on this one. Really? Okay. And Fada, mm -hmm. let's close with you. Uh, is the weight cut, you know, you, you think there's any problems? I mean, Kayla is as professional as it, as it, as it gets. It doesn't, leave like, it doesn't seem like she leaves any stone unturned. And then, of course, let's finish out with your prediction as well. Someone mentioned it earlier in the chat, and I want to shout them out, but they, they said basically that, that she has started lighter, and that's a good point. Like, it's not like this is sprung up on her. She started lighter, so obviously she's taking the weight cut very seriously. Is it going to be hard? Do I expect it to potentially impact her? But this is not a five-round fight. So because it's mm -hmm. a three-round fight, I think I'm leading Kayla.